Fellow viewers, you are welcome to this second program on the series on matrices and determinants. Now, before we go on to discussing this second program itself, it will be good in case we have a quick look at what we did in the first program. In the first program, first of all, we introduced you to what a matrix is. Remember, we said that a matrix is the information displayed in rows and columns. And we had cited an example where the information of production of bulbs and tubes from two factories were taken. Then we took you on to the introduction of various types of matrices. The first one was a row matrix, where there is one row. Column matrix, there is only one column. Zero matrix, zero matrix can be of any order, but the only requirement was and is that all the elements are all zero. Then other types of matrices that you were introduced to you were square matrix, where the number of rows and columns is the same. Then diagonal matrix, where we found that all the elements were zero except the ones along the diagonal. And that took, you know, took us on to a scalar matrix, where the diagonal matrix now elements they all became equal and other elements were all zero. And when these equal elements along the diagonal became all one, we termed this as an identity matrix. These are the two examples that we are citing here again. Then transpose of a matrix, where the rows and columns of a matrix were transposed and we got a new matrix like A, these elements, the rows became columns and the columns they became the rows. So, interchange of rows and columns gives us what we term as the transpose of a matrix. Then we gave you two specific examples of matrices. One we called the symmetric matrix, where you had discovered that the elements on the either side of this diagonal equidistant, these were the same and the transpose of such a matrix we found was the matrix itself. That is in case you change this row to column, then the resultant would be the same matrix once again. And we found that such a matrix has got essentially to be a square matrix and the transpose of a symmetric matrix will be the matrix itself. Then we went on to introduce you to a skew symmetric matrix. A skew symmetric matrix we said was a square matrix, all diagonal elements of this matrix 0 and elements on either side of diagonal that means equidistant from the diagonal are equal in magnitude opposite in sign and the examples of two such matrices are here where you could find that these diagonals all elements 0 equidistant they are equal in magnitude, but they are opposite in sign. If one is positive the other is negative. Having seen this now we are ready to go on to certain more understanding of the matrices and then on to the operations. Remember just yet when we say talked about the symmetric matrix, we said that the matrix when transposed gives the matrix itself. Here is another example of two matrices where we find that the elements match matrix A, A B C D E F, B A B C D E F all the elements they are equal, order of the two matrices is the same, we call them as the equal matrices and we write in this case A is equal to B. We can construct many such examples, say we have got a matrix X, where we say this is 3, 4, 5, 5, 4, 2. If I write this matrix, 
and write another matrix say y which is 4 2 1 5 2 1. Can I call these two matrices as equal? Surely not because according to our definition that we just had this 3 should match with th uh, 3 here, 4 should have 4 here, 5 should have 5 here, 5 should have 5 here and 4 should have a 2 here, uh, 4 here and 2 should have 2 here means we have got to remember that we can call two matrices equal only in case all the elements they match. Let us have another situation here. We have got two matrices x 3 4 5 6 y 3 4 5 a. We are claiming that these two matrices are equal. If we are claiming these two matrices to be equal, what do you think A should be? Surely, A should be what this element is means it should be 6. Now, having talked of these equal matrices, we are now setting a stage where we want to go back to that instance of factories producing certain goods and let us take this one. We are having an instance where there are two factories, factory A and factory B producing shirts and jeans for ladies and gents. In this particular factory, there are 160 units of shirts, 50 here for jeans and for gents, tree A is producing 200 shirts, 150 jeans and the factory B is producing 275 here. 100 and 200. In case we are trying to find out what the total production of the factory is, the two factories is, we have to add the number of shirts to the number of shirts in case of ladies, the jeans to the jeans, then shirts, there is gents shirts to the gents shirts and the I mean, gents jeans to the gents jeans and we find that the total production comes up as 160 plus 200 that is here, then 75, 50 that is here, this 200 plus 100 we write here, this 200, this 150 we write here. Is this not giving you an idea that the information which is displayed in rows and columns can also be put under the operation of addition? Yes. This is one way where we can compile the information and get on to another information. For that we take another instance. We have got the marks obtained by Anjali and Mahesh in two tests. Anjali, English, Maths and Science, these are the three subjects we are considering, obtains in the first test 35, 45, 40, Mahesh he gets 30, 40 and 45. In the second test, Anjali scored 40, 46 and 45, Mahesh 35, 45 and 40. Naturally, when we are compiling the final result, we will have to find out what exactly the total of the marks is. So, we say that the total marks obtained by Anjali would be English marks added to English marks, maths total here 40 and 45, these are put in this case and 30, 35 here, 40 and 45 here and we find that the total marks that are obtained do come up like this. This is another instance where information can be added together to arrive at a new situation. But now the question is can we add information in case of matrices in any case? that means addition of matrices, can we add any two matrices to arrive at an information? You must have observed in the previous examples that we can add information when it is given in this shape, means the order of this matrix and the order of this matrix they match exactly. This matrix is 3 by 3, this is also 3 by 3. What can you say about this? 
can you add these two matrices? This matrix is 2 rows, 3 columns, 2 by 3. This is 3 rows, 2 columns, 3 by 2. Surely you cannot. We cannot add this information because the order does not match. What of this? We can because order of the two matrices is the same. And what of this? Again, this is 3 by 3, 3 by 3. We can add the two informations and arrive at the result. And what will be the addition result in case of this matrix? When we add these two, we will be getting A1, X1 as the first element here. And the second element will be B1 plus Y1. And the third element will be C1 plus Z1 and so on. You can add all the elements and arrive at the next matrix. Now, we can see that in summarizing, we can add two matrices only when the matrices are of the same order. It is very important for you to remember that the matrices can be added only when you have got the matrices of the same order. Naturally, when we talk of addition, we talk of certain properties as well. Now, what are those properties we want to talk about? Say, we are given a matrix A, 4, 5, 3, 2, another matrix, 5, 0, 2, 1. What do you think will be A plus B equal to? A plus B is going to be 4 plus 5, which is 9, 5 plus 0, which is 5, 3 plus 2, which is 5, 2 plus 1, which is 3. What do you think will be B plus A equal to? Now we go reverse. 5 plus 4, again 9, and then 0 plus 5 which is 5, 2 plus 3, which is 5, 1 plus 2, which is 3. What can you say about these two matrices? Aren't they the same? Surely, 9, 9, 5, 5, 5, 5, 3, 3. Can I say that A plus B is equal to B plus A? Means, given two matrices, we may add them anyhow means A plus B or B plus A, the result is going to be the same. Now, we are given these three matrices here. Can you add these two? A plus B, this is not possible. B plus C, not possible. C plus A or A plus C? Yes, we can find A plus C. Means this is the only, these are the two matrices which can be added, but you cannot add this to this, this to this. This was again to remind you that whenever you are trying to add the two matrices, then remember order must be checked. Otherwise, it is a futile effort to try and add to the two matrices. Well, we have talked about A plus B equal to B plus A, wherein we found that they was coming to be equal. That is the commutative property. Now, C in this case, if we add A plus C and add C plus A, what do you think the result is going to be? 3 plus 1 is 4 and 1 plus 3 is also 4. Similarly, 4 plus 4 is 8 or either way you add, we say that this is the rule that holds, that addition in case of matrices is commutative. Aren't you reminded of the number system that you have been doing, real numbers, complex numbers, and previous to that natural numbers and integers? You studied a property there which was called the associativity. We are now going on to that and we in that case talk about 
the associativity, but before we talk about the associativity, let me give you one very typical example in case of matrices and for that we consider this matrix. Now, supposing this matrix from here we I want to get what 2 A is equal to. What does 2 A mean? It only means A plus A. The result is going to be 7, 1, 2, 3 plus 7, 1, 2, 3. 7 plus 7, 14, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 2, 4, 3 plus 3, 6. In case you look at this, is it not the same thing as multiplying this with 2, this with 2, this with 2, this with 2? 2 7s are 14, 2 1s are 2, 2 2s are 4, 2 3s are 6. From there, can you tell me what the 3a will be equal to? You do not have to now write again and add the matrices because 3a is going to be 3 times of every element here. And in general, in case I write a matrix here, 4, 2, 3, 1, 0, 1 and call it A, what do you think will be n times A equal to? Every element will be multiplied with n. This is what the answer will be. And now we are on to another instance where we talk about the information in relation to another situation where we are now talking about Rajesh, Rahman and Julia. They are appearing in test 1, test 2 and test 3. Test 1 scores in English mathematics and science in respect of first test in all the three cases. This is in regard to Rajesh. This is in respect of Rahman. This is in respect of Julia. Second test, the information is 45, 40 and 40 in case of Rajesh and then Rahman and Julia. Having seen the marks in all the three tests, we can find out what is the total score in all the three tests in case of the three students is. That marks obtained by Rajesh in English will be 30 plus 45 plus 45 means 120. This represents the total marks obtained by Rajesh and obtained by Rajesh in mathematics 125. You have to add these three figures and add these three figures. Now, here we find that the three figures were so straightforward that we could add them straight away. But is it possible that you do that kind of addition? Remember, addition is a binary operation. We add two things, but this one that we were trying to show you, we were adding three numbers all at one instance. But when you studied the number system, you did study that you add two numbers and the sum of those two you add to the third. This is going to be handy for us in case we study the same thing in case of matrices. And this we try to understand by this property that in case we have got three matrices A, B and C, we find that all the matrices are of the same order means any two can be added together because the specimen uh, satisfy the basic property. What will be A plus B plus C equal to? means we are trying to find out what is B plus C, A, A in this case is 1, 3, 4, 2, 0, 2, 4, 1, 5. And what is B plus C? B plus C is 2 plus 3, 5, 1 plus 2, 3, 1 plus 1, 2 and then this will be going to be 6, 4, 
and 5 and you are going to have 3 plus 2 which is 5, 4 plus 0 is 4, 2 plus 1 is 3 and the sum of these two is going to give you a plus b plus c. This addition you could also do by another associativity of the matrices that is by adding a plus b first and then adding to c and you will find that the result comes up to be the same. So, associativity in case of addition of matrices is possible. Now, when we talk of these properties in case of addition of matrices, we do find that there are certain other properties we need to mention about. What are those? We need to talk about these three basic things that is subtraction and additive inverse and additive identity. We illustrate what subtraction is. We take a matrix A, 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 4. We take a matrix B. Now, subtraction or addition possible only in case we have got the matrix of the same order. So, this is 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 9 same order by subtraction we mean a minus b or b minus a it depends what you are trying to find out. How to find this out? a minus b means that we are trying to write what is a plus minus 1 times b is. We have not studied what is minus 1 times b is, but it is very simple to understand. I take you back to that when we said that A is equal to a given matrix, then 2A means all the elements of the matrix will be multiplied with 2, 3A all will be multiplied with 3 and the same holds. In case I say minus 1 times B, then all the elements of B will be multiplied with minus 1. So, we write here this is A 3, 4, 0, 2, 3, 9, this is in case of A and then minus 1 times B, this is minus 2, minus 1, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 9. In case you add these two, what are you going to get? You are going to get 3 minus 2 which is equal to 1, add 4 and minus 1 which is 3, 0 and minus 1 which is minus 1, 2 and minus 2 which is 0. 3 and minus 3 is 0, 9 and minus 9 is 0. Are we all right? No, we are not because you find that this should have been 3, 4, 0 and this is 1, 2, 4. We took the elements here from this one. We will be in that case doing this correction and writing it as 3, 4, 0, 1, 2, 4 and then the element coming out is minus 2, 1, uh, minus 2, minus 1 and minus 1, minus 2, minus 3 and minus 9 and this is what gives us A minus B equal to which is 1, 3, minus 1 and then this is minus 1 this is minus 1 and minus 5. And just as in case of numbers, the commutativity in case of subtraction is not possible, but there are simpler ways of doing subtraction that you do not have to go and write when you say a minus b as a minus 1 times b. All that you need to do in subtraction is subtract the respective elements and you will get the answer we do talk about the identity element and we have already talked about it. And what is the identity element? Identity in the element in case of the matrices is the 0 matrix and what will be the additive inverse? Additive inverse will be the negative of the given matrix. 
the negative of the given matrix in case we have got the matrix A and we find out what is the matrix in case of say this is A 2 3 4 5 additive inverse is minus A means this is the additive inverse. because when you add these two you are going to get the 0 matrix 2 minus 2, 3 minus 3, 4 minus 4, 5 minus 5. Having talked about these we straightway introduce you to the next concept that is when we are trying to multiply the matrices. For that we take a situation, we consider this situation in which we have got Rekha trying to buy 10 notebooks and 12 pencils. Another friend of hers, Suman trying to buy 15 notebooks and 10 pencils. Cost of one notebook is 12 rupees, one pencil is 2 rupees. We write this in the form 10, 12, 10 notebooks, 12 pencils, Rekha wants to buy. Suman wants to buy 15 notebooks, 10 pencils, 15 notebooks and 10 pencils, cost 12 and 2. How much money will Rekha spend on this? Rekha will spend for 10 notebooks times 12, so many rupees on notebooks, on pencils, 12 pencils at the rate of 2, this much. We have got in case of Suman 15 and 10 means she will be spending this money. So, the respective amount spent by the two of them is 144 rupees and 200 rupees. This is an indication where we are trying to multiply the two matrices and getting the result. When we are having information in case of two matrices then the multiplication is always done that this row gets multiplied with this and the first element is got. When you multiply these two with this, you get this. Means this is got by multiplying the first row with the first column. First row, first column this element, first row, second column it comes here then second row, first column, this is what the element is, second row, second column, this and the matrix result can be written like this. This is how we multiply the two matrices. We will continue with this multiplication of matrices and related properties in our next program. In the meanwhile, try to go over what we have done now. Thank you.